Yo, what's up? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how I made the 32 tune snare instrument rack. It was driven by sampler on multi sample mode. And what I'm going to do is show you just how to make something like that. The reason why I went with the sampler instead of the drum rack for my tuned snares was that I wanted to be able to use MIDI, uh, MIDI note, and I wanted to be able to cycle through all of the snares that I had tuned easily while still being able to adjust the, the note that they hit at. So if I had it at an A2, I could just cycle through all of the, the snares that I had tuned and they'd all hit at the A2. And then if I needed to change it for a different track, I could just put a new MIDI note in. And, and it would be a lot simpler than having to go in and tune each simpler or sampler inside of a drum rack. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. Two things you need to do, or two things you should do before this tutorial is one, go check out my tutorial on tuning percussion. Highly recommend it, super cool. You don't have to leave Ableton, you don't have to install any other plugins. You just go ahead and do it, everything with native devices. So go ahead and maybe tune a bunch of snares. Tune like 10 snares after that tutorial, and then come back to this tutorial and I'm gonna show you how to make the, the rack. Similar to the second thing that's really important, is to just go ahead and download the rack I made for you guys. It's um, 32 snare hits that are already tuned and ready to go. They're already processed. They already sound really nice, but there's a bunch of other effects if you want them. So highly recommend it. Go grab it. Make sure to share. Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is just have this MIDI MIDI channel here, and I'm going to drop a sampler inside of there. And hopefully you've already completed the process of tuning a few snares or a few pieces of percussion or kick or something. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead to my desktop and find my samples. I've already processed these and cropped them nice. I'm going to take all of them, hold down shift and hit down here so I've selected all of them, and I'm going to drop them right inside of the sampler here. It says drop sample here, but you can actually drop multiple samples there, and it's just going to put them in different zones. So what I'm going to do is just do that. And it says 31 of 31 samples are selected. So I'm going to open up the zone right here, and you can see that I have all of my samples inside of here. And what you should have done when you tune them was to give them the proper name. So something like snare hit one, and it's hitting at an A2. Okay? So with that proper name that you would have given it in the tuning phase of this, you would come down here to the root key of the simpler and change it to A2 because you've already labeled it for yourself saying it's hitting on an A2 so change it to an A2. And let's say that this snare was hitting on an F sharp 2. Okay, So you'd want to look at that name and then you'd want to click it and as you can see down here the root key has gone back to C3 which is the default root key. You just change that to C sharp 2. And now I have this snare is hitting on an A2, this snare is hitting on an F2, but they're both, now that they're properly tuned, will hit on whatever note I have inside of my MIDI clip. Pretty clever, right? So you'd want to repeat that process for all of the samples that you've tuned. You'd want to go through and change the root key to the proper root key. The next thing you'd want to do is come into the velocity. And I'm going to go ahead and control, uh, control A to select them all. And I'm going to grab this top line here, which is the velocity ramp. And I'm going to pull it over to 100. You can see that little number there. And the reason why I'm pulling it over to 100 and not to 127 is because if you at, make a new MIDI clip like I've done right here, the default velocity is 100. So I don't want to have to remember every time I use my snare rack to go in and adjust the velocity up to 127 when I could just leave it, the velocity is effectively 127 but at 100. So that's the default velocity inside a MIDI clip. I just think that's an easier way to do it. You obviously don't have to do it. But if I wanted something, uh, if I wanted to make a pattern with its snares hitting at a kind of softer level, I could just go in and then obviously manipulate the sensitivity lines down here inside of the MIDI clip. Or this obviously applies to how hard you hit the key on your keyboard. Okay, that's the velocity sensitivity area. 
And the next thing we'd have to do is come into the selector. Now, right now, if I play this clip, it's going to trigger all of these samples at the same time. And that's not what I want. I want to be able to scroll through all of these snares and have one play at a time until I find the sound that I want. And then I could put in the right note inside the MIDI. So the way I would do that is, again, select one and then control A to select everything. Right click and then distribute ranges equally. And what that's going to do is it's going to chop these up in a nice kind of pattern like this. And now I can use this chain selector to scroll through and select which snare I want to have playing at the right time. So the next stage would be to click, come down here in the sampler, right click and hit group, which is going to group to an instrument rack. And then I'm going to open up the instrument rack and then I'm going to go back to the selector, the, the zone selector and I'm gonna right click right here and go map to macro one. And now if you notice up here, as I'm scrolling through, it's gonna be scrolling through all of my different snares. So if I go ahead and play this MIDI clip, I can preview the snares and how they sound. And if you've done all the tuning right, they're all gonna be hitting on the same fundamental note. And in this case, it would be an A2. Okay, so that's pretty sweet. And the next process would just be adding some effects to the end of this. Now, like I said, these are already pretty processed. Some of the best effects would just be to use some default, like the compressor. Uh, I've got a default snare compressor. I would just put that there. And then I would map the dry wet to the macro two, but I would leave it at zero because I don't want it on because I think it's already compressed enough. But if I needed more, that's what I'd want. So. I'd also map the on off to that same macro knob and come into the map mode and where it says compressor device on off, I want to go one zero up here. And now when it's at zero, the device is actually off, not draining any CPU or anything like that. And then as I come up on the compressor, the device turns on. That's a good way to do it. Some other typical effects that I'd put on a snare would be an EQ, I'm not gonna do that here, but also a, a saturator, maybe a bit warmer, and I'd repeat that process with the dry, wet, and the on off. But I'd also wanna map the, the drive here, and then map the dry, wet, and the on off to the same macro as the dry, wet, and then I'd come into the map mode, and again, the device on off, I'd go one, zero and I'd leave that down at zero, but maybe take the drive and leave it at three. Again, that drive doesn't matter right now because the device is off when the dry wet's at zero. So you'd also wanna maybe put on a reverb and you know a limiter on the end, just so you're never gonna be clipping. Stuff like this, stuff that I've covered a million times in other tutorials. I'm not gonna show you how to do that now because I think it's pretty self-explanatory or you could just read the blog post, whatever. But I just wanted to show you some of these neat tricks inside of Sampler to kind of use it as a tuned drum rack. I think it's really cool. I think it's got a lot of advantages above just a regular drum rack and it's just a lot easier to be able to tune your drums to the key of your track using this method. Anyway, I hope that helped you guys and uh, don't forget to rate, subscribe, and comment, and share. We'll see you next time. Peace.